Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me for review number 149, in which we're still looking through, having a little hook through my uh, cabinets, looking at some miscellaneous sort of random bottles that I couldn't pigeonhole, couldn't find a place for, so I just decided to bunch them all into this miscellaneous malt series. Immediate apologies for the sound in this video. My usual mic has let me down at the 11th hour, so I will be trying to sort that out before we come back uh, with my next review. So until then, it's just me, you and that mic there. So uh, it's as good as it gets. Yes, we're visiting the Lacranza distillery there in Arran for their port cask finish. This one uh, bottled at 50%, yes, Eight years, matured uh, roughly eight years, I believe, in ex-bourbon casks before being finished in export casks. So that's the sort of rough idea of what's going on there. Uh, Non-chill filter, no colour added, just how we like it. Aaron, isn't it? Let's get in. Bright, slightly tangy, initially. The label suggests strawberry jam and mandarin orange, and I am going to totally agree with them there. Yes, definitely. Strawberry jam, mandarin orange. It's so much easier when they get the tasting notes and <laughs> along that match up to my opinion on the label. Obviously, my tasting notes and somebody else's tasting notes might be slightly different. But in this case, definitely strawberry jam, mandarin orange. There's a slight uh, meatiness of it. Like I'm going to suggest like a sweet bacon, some sort of cured bacon and a whininess, which would I would expect given the, the port finish. There's also hints of apricot that it is nice, sweet and fruity. Uh, as I said, hints of apricot and also weirdly, one that I suppose maybe doesn't tend, or doesn't maybe sound like it would sit very well in here, but talcum powder. I'm just getting a hint of talcum powder in there. Not that that's off-putting, because it is a very good nose. Thick, sweet and sour arrival. That strawberry jam is back. It's thick, as I said, it's oily. It's, yeah. I mentioned bacon on the nose. Once again, there is a meaty, savoury note that runs through the palate as well. Port cask influence returns with that sweet, a sweet wine, not a dessert wine, just a sweet, uh, nice, a bit of red, I suppose, which is supposed usually technically dry, but there's a nice sweetness there, not overly sweet, but a nice wininess also. And it's that port cask, it's that wine influence that changes this up and that this would be, I find, incredibly unctuous. As I said, it's very oily and thick, and there's enough sweetness, enough fruitiness going on, that it would, for me, be incredibly mouth-watering and unctuous. But because of the port cask finish on it, it actually goes dry. So it takes that sort of mouth-watering feel off it. Once again, not in a bad way. It's a good thing. It's very, very well balanced, very well made, and very good. I'm even getting a, a slight hint of sweet breakfast tea now. Finish, sorry, medium length. There's a sort of a nutmeggy heat going on at the end of it. And once again, the wininess, the sweetness runs through into the finish, goes dry as expected, but 
well well played through it does go a little dry but it works for it it definitely works for it it's it's all going very well i have to say water yes it can take it give it a chance to settle i do not do so here for the purposes of this review but i would give it a chance let that water settle in and you will definitely most definitely be rewarded It softens a lot and it makes those mandarin orange and apricot notes more pronounced. And it's so beautifully soft and round. Yeah, it's still an incredibly good nose. Palette, softer, rounder, but bolder takes a hint of that oiliness off it. Turns the heat up a little on that uh, nutmeg I mentioned earlier. But it just still very round, even better balance with a touch of water. Finish doesn't change an awful lot, but the heat is still there of that nutmeg. The dryness is still there, although maybe a, a a tinge of that dryness has been peeled off with a, a touch of water, but very, very good. Certainly, I would have to say, of the orange I've tasted so far, my favourite. I, I really like this. I've liked this from day one. As you can see, this is the older bottling. Uh, will I replace it? Yes, I will replace this. I just, I find it very, very well made. It just feels right. There's, there's just lovely balance up of heat, mouthfeel, nice sweetness of fresh fruit, and as I said, or even, you know, strawberry jam or something that's been a, a fruit that has been worked on. Uh, so yeah, definitely, I would recommend this. Let's just move on from that. So, if I'm recommending this to you, what would I recommend as an alternative? Well, I must admit, open, open and honest, as always, the bottle that I'm going to offer to you is one that I haven't had in quite some time. Uh, and this bottle, my latest bottle of it, is yet unopened. So, uh, it is this, the Glenmorangie, 14 year old Quintery Ban. As I said, it's a while since I've had this, but I paid £45 for this bottle. It's 46%. I believe there's not a lot of colour added, although there may be some colour added. I know Glenmorency do claim that they don't add colour, but this may have some colour added. I would have thought, would it be chill filtered? Yes, it's chill filtered. But £45, remember, it's got that 45 year old age, 45, 14 year old age statement, which is a lot. It's, it's a lot. So, from memory, from memory, because it is quite a while since I've had it, but from memory, the Glenmorency 14 year old Quintery Band is a good alternative if that's what you're looking for. Port finish, something, a little, uh, there's still enough maltiness, enough of that. It's had enough time in ex bourbon that the, that the port finish is just a suggestion rather than being an overpowering, especially if you're not into wine maturation or X wine maturation or X wine finishes. Well then, to me, both of these whiskies don't overdo that. It's just had enough of that port influence to keep it palatable. So there you go, yes. Yeah, definitely, the, the iron port cask I will, I will replace, I would recommend. It's, yet again, I think I paid around the 50 pounds mark for this maybe slightly less i know now it's around the 50 pounds mark so that's still for me a good price yes it's non aid statement but sometimes when the whiskey's good it doesn't have to have an aid statement in my opinion if the whiskey's good it speaks for itself so there you go thank you very much for joining me once again i apologize for the sound in this in this review uh thank you very very much to my patrons if you wish to join that group 
the details are in the video description below. Thank you very much, my friends. Until the next time, here's your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.